Going back to the late 70s, a very influential book, uh, The Elements of Programming Style. Um, so I got recently accused of my, my views, on, uh, uh, views on comments. I'm, I'm not a no comments guy. I'm a just like, really, you need to cut back on them uh, kind of guy. Um, and uh, use them sparingly type of guy. But somebody said, oh, you know, it's just so trendy to not do comments. And I said, no, really, actually, this is the book that I read that gave me my, my views. Um, if a program is incorrect, it matters little what the documentation says. Here, documentation is referring to in-code documentation. Uh, this is a good point. Um, if documentation does not agree with the code, it is not worth much. In fact, I would say it is of negative value. It's not simply not worth an awful lot. Actually, you now have two stories the code is telling you. The one that's the real one, which is the code, and then a different story which you might be seduced into believing, but is actually, it's, it's basic journalism, okay? It's all lies, okay? Three, consequently, code must largely document itself if it cannot rewrite the code rather than increase supplementary documentation. Good code needs fewer comments than bad code does. If you take one bullet point away, number three, that is the one that you want. It's a, it's a profound insight. Okay, rewrite it so I don't need the explanation. What would I want to communicate to somebody? So there's the, there's the key idea. Comments should provide additional information. I should never parrot the code. Mnemonic variable names and labels and so on should emphasize logical structure, help make a program self-documenting. However, I do put, a, I do put a, a sort of a buffer or barrier of caution on that. Sometimes it's all too easy to say, ah, oh, the code's self-documenting. Which self made that judgment? Probably the self that wrote it. You need another self to make the judgment. Yeah, it's not really your judgment to make that it's self-documenting. Show it to somebody else. Yeah, that, that's, 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 uh, this is where we get social with the code. But there is this idea of there is a lack of guidance on this, and so therefore comments lose. Comments are a little bit like um, gold in the sense that their value derives from their scarcity. Gold's value derives from its scarcity. It's not worth as much per kilogram as something like iron. Iron is surprisingly common on this planet. So therefore, we don't charge as much for it as we do gold. Gold, part of its value derives from its scarcity. And you want that with your comments. They should be gold. And they should, when you see a comment, it's just like, this is worth pausing for and reading. In other words, it tells me something that is non-obvious. So there's also another thing that came out. <laughs> there's a, a tweet of mine that seems to have got retweeted rather a lot. Common fallacy is to assume authors of incomprehensible code will somehow be able to express themselves lucidly and clearly in comments. And sometimes people say, oh, yeah, yeah I like using comments to explain what I've done in the code. OK, so why did you not do that in the code? And what manner of explanation are you going to offer? I'm going to say, writing clearly is hard. It is non-trivial. Okay? And I say that with my fiction author hat on and my technical author hat on. And I think I've kind of got the hang of writing. Maybe. And I've been doing some form of writing since, I don't know, primary school or something like that. And so a few decades. And I think I might have got the hang of it, but I'm not entirely sure. Ask me again in 10 years, and I'll probably have a different view. It's non-trivial to do this. And if you're struggling to express yourself in one written format, which actually gives you the appropriate bandwidth uh, uh, to explain yourself in, then I don't rate your chances very highly elsewhere.